Ho, ho, ho. Is that Adam Graham? The very same. And this is my old-time radio snack wagon. Welcome to the Old Time Radio Snack Wagon, where we serve up a bite-sized portion of old-time radio. And now, here's your Snack Wagon host, Adam Graham. Welcome to the Old Time Radio Snack Wagon. Love and Abner were one of the flagship series of the 1930s. While other programs came and went, they became trailblazers, along with the likes of Fibber McGee and Molly, The Lone Ranger, and Amos and Andy. The series remained a lasting hit in an ever-changing radio landscape. The characters of Lum and Abner were created by Chester Locke and Norris Goff, two young men from Arkansas. Lum and Abner were co-owners of the rural Jotham Down store in the then-fictional location of Pine Ridge, Arkansas. They based their characterization and performances on people they actually knew from back home. The series was told in a comic soap opera fashion with long storylines marked by clever wordplay, ironic plot twist, and the duo's ability to create multiple characters. Grandpappy Squeers, Squire Skimp, Cedric Weehunt, and Dick Huddleston filled the world of Lum and Abner, and each were played seamlessly by either Locke or Goff, other than a few cameos by talents such as Bob Hope or Jack Benny, every voice except the announcer was performed by the two stars. The unincorporated area that they based Pine Ridge on was actually renamed after the program. There were actually three unincorporated countries throughout the South renamed Jotham Down or Pine Ridge after the series. Hollywood came calling and in early 1940, the show went on hiatus so that Locke and Goff could focus on making movies, leaving fans of the radio show without new episodes for more than a year. Today, we're bringing you the only episode released during this hiatus. Lum and Abner's Christmas special had become a tradition with a fresh performance every year. It brought with it a feeling of hope and goodwill. In 1940, it was definitely needed in a world torn by war and hate with mass uncertainty about the future. On December 25th, 1940, Lum and Abner returned to the Columbia Broadcasting System for a special broadcast. While the recording is not in the best of shape, its touching story is still worth a listen today. Holiday greetings from Hollywood. As a special feature of the Christmas Caravan, the Columbia Broadcasting System presents the eighth annual Yuletide broadcast by those two lovable old fellows from Pine Ridge, Lum and Abner. It was in 1933 that Lum and Abner first told their simple story of nativity, the tale of a humble event in Pine Ridge, which reflected the glory of Bethlehem's wondrous miracle. And since 1933, they have answered the requests of their many friends by retelling the story each Christmas day. As Christmas 1940 rolled round, Lum and Abner were taking a well-earned leave of absence from their long series of broadcasts. But they were more than happy to accept Columbia's invitation to appear again and to extend their Christmas greetings in the way which has become a tradition. So for Lum and Abner's annual Christmas story, let's go see what's happening down at Pine Ridge. Well, all business and other activities have been cast aside in Pine Ridge today. A heavy snow has fallen, and it's now after dark. Three old fellows, Lum, Abner, and Grandpappy Spears, are trudging through the snow on a real Christmas mission. Listen. You're sure we're headed right now, you Grandpappy. Yeah, yeah, I know this is the way, Abner. Doc Miller rode his horse over here. You can see his tracks there in the snow. 
Well, it must be the old Gaddis place, then. Yeah, yeah, that's just about where it's at. But there ain't nothing but the barn left over there. That house burnt down two or three years ago. Well, Doc says it's due east from that road where we turned off. Due east? Now, which way is east? I ain't paid no attention to the direction. Wait a minute. Whereabouts is the east star? There it is, right ahead of us. We're going right, man. Don't worry about that. Yeah, we can just follow the east star. Yeah, yeah. That ought to lead us to it. How did you find out about these folks, Granddad? Well, Doc Miller and his woman had Christmas dinner over at our place, and we sat in there visiting after we got done eating, and the telephone rang and told Doc to get right on over here. Well, who done the calling? Oh, some fella named Joe, Joseph, something or other. I forget what he did call his name. He'd went over to some neighbor's house to call. Well... Said they'd been into the county seat to pay their taxes, and there weren't no room at the hotel, so they'd just come out here to this old barn to spend the night. Well, now, this ain't fitting weather to have to stay out in the old barn. And they said they were sort of expecting the baby to be born tonight, huh? Yeah, that's the reason they called Doc Miller. <laughs> What's the matter, Abner? All right, doggies, my arms is getting tired. Well, here, here, let me... Carry them blankets up while you can carry this oil heater. Huh. Is that box of groceries getting heavy, Grandpa? No, I'm all right, Lum. We ought to be there directly anyhow. Yeah, sir, this snow tarred about out walking to it, you know it. Yeah, well, maybe we we're walking a little fast for you, Abner. Here, you, you take the lantern, too. Yeah. Yeah, sir, it is mighty sorry of you fellas to come over here at night this way. I sort of hate to call you to get out on Christmas, but after Doc left, me and the woman got to talking about how pitiful it was that that couple was having to stay out here in this barn with nothing to eat and all. Well, I'm just glad you called me, Grandpa. I'm just proud of a chance to help. Yeah, this makes it seem more like Christmas to me, doing for somebody else. Sure. You know, you just can't do things to make others happy without making yourself happy at the same time. Trouble with a lot of us, we sort of lose our Christmas idea altogether. Think too much about ourselves. The real Christmas spirit is the happiness we get out of making others happy. Yeah, yeah. There we was now, sitting there at home. Thought we was enjoying ourselves. These folks out here spending Christmas in an old barn this away. No, it just wouldn't have been no Christmas to it if you hadn't have called us up, Grandpa. Well, I, I know that I could depend on you, fellas. Now, if it's the old Gaddis place, we ought to be able to see it from the top of this hill here. Wait a minute. I, I believe that's the barn yonder, ain't it? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's where they're at, sure, sure. Well, that's due east from where we was at, all right, for there's the east star right over the top of the barn. Yeah, yeah, there's Doc's horse tied to the fence there. He, this is the place. <laughs> See the light shining through the cracks in the wall. Well, sir, it's just a shame them folks never let some of us know what they needed a place to stay. We've got plenty of room over at the place, just being glad I had them. Well, this man that called off said they was looking for a place to stay and see this barn weren't being used, so they just put up there for the night. Uh-huh. Uh, whereabouts do they live, Grandpa, did he say? Why, yeah, they're from over by Ple Pleasant Valley, Summers. Pleasant Valley. Yeah. He told off he never had no cash money, taking every nickel he had to pay his taxes, but... Said if he'd make the call, he'd work it out quick as he could. Well, old Doc never refused a call in his life, I don't reckon. No, no. I've known him to get up in the dead of night, in the worst kind of weather, to go call on the sick when he knowed before he went, he never would get no pay. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't know what we'd do with that old Doc here in this community. Whilst there's some... It Says his methods is a little old-fashioned, but I grannies, I'll take my chances with him every time. 
Yes, he's pulled me through the shadows time and again. Well, I've always said Doc never practiced medicine for what money he got out of it, as much as he does for the good he can be to his fellow man. No, sir, if there ever was a man that's got a preserved seat in the better world, it's old Doc Miller. Well, here, we better not be talking too loud, fellas. We don't want to disturb them none. No, 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 let's all be as quiet as we can. Well, let's see, we got to let the Doc know we're here somewhere or other. I reckon it won't hurt nothing to tap on the door sort of gentle. No, no, go ahead. They might be needing this oil stove on. <laughs> I don't believe you knock quite loud enough, huh? I don't hear a sound in there. Well, maybe they never hear you. Wait a minute. Here comes somebody to the door. Yeah, honey, Doc. Oh, hello there. Well, what are you three old codgers doing out here this time of the night? Doing out here? We just got to thinking after you left, Doc, these folks might be needing something. Yeah, Doc, we brought an oil stove and some bed covers here. And here's a box of groceries. Well, they're certainly needing them. They haven't any kind of uh, heat in there at all. Using what little hay was left for a bed, I piled it all up in the manger and made a pretty good bed. But now these covers will come in awful handy. Uh, how, how's the lady, Doc? Why, well, getting along as well as could be expected, Long. Well, here, I'll take these things on in and have her husband light this heater and warm the place up a little. Right, you men had uh, better stay out here for a while. Oh, right, yeah, sure, sure. Go ahead, Doc. We, we'll wait out here. If there's anything we can do, Doc, now let us know. All right. Thank you. Oh, Doc, uh, what kind of work does this car do? Oh, I, uh, he said a while ago that he was a carpenter by trade, Long. Said he'd been out of work quite a while, though. Well, look here, I better get back up here. Yeah. Said he was a carpenter, huh? Yeah. I'm just thinking, Abner. We've been talking about building that loading platform at the back door of the store there. I believe it'd be a pretty good idea to get this fellow to help us. Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea, Long. And we might get him to do a little fixing up in the store, too. Well, he'll want to be nice his wife and baby for a few days now. Quick as Doc thinks it's safe for him to be moved, I'm going to insist on him coming right on over there to our place and stand. Well, that'd be the best place in the world for our grandparents. Aunt Charity could take care of them better than anybody I know. Oh, yeah, she'd get a sight of enjoyment out of looking after the baby. <laughs> <laughs> Just loves children. Oh, no, that woman of yours, Grandpa, has mothered every youngin' in the community. <laughs> yes, yeah, sir, I was just thinking here, fellas. Here we are, three old codgers getting along in years, standing around out here waiting. Waiting for a little baby to be born. It's sort of like as if we were waiting for somebody to take her place. Well, of course, we don't like to talk about such things, but now we just about sorted our time, I reckon. Yeah, it won't be long before we'll have to move on and there'll be somebody else to take her place. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they'll soon forget about us, Lord. It's sort of like the years. Here, 1940s almost gone. There's been a lot of things happen, but they'll soon be forgot. There's been lots of joys and happiness. And on the other hand, there's been lots of heartaches and lots of blasted hopes. But there's a new year coming, and we'll all get to start all over again. Here will come 1941, bringing new hope and new courage. And we're sort of like the years, us three old fellas. We're sort of like 1940. We're waiting on 1941. The little baby in yonder. Well, it's just like I've already said. Wait a minute, I believe somebody's coming to the door. Oh, maybe so. Maybe so. <laughs> Any news yet, Doc? Well, men, it's a fine baby boy.
And so we take leave of Pine Ridge. And in behalf of the Columbia Broadcasting System, I want to thank you, Lum and Abner, for coming down here tonight to bring us your Christmas story. Well, Granny, don't thank us, Lou. We're just proud to do it. Why, sure, sure. Facts is, it just wouldn't seem like Christmas without us all getting together again this way. Gives us an opportunity to thank all our friends for the many nice letters they've wrote us since we went off the air. And to wish each and every one of you a Merry Christmas. And a Happy New Year. And the same to you, Lum and Abner. I know we're all anxiously waiting for you to get that jot and down store open for business again. This is Lou Crosby speaking. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. The program is beautiful and manages to speak both to Christmas and New Year and also focus on the power of giving as a way to celebrate Christmas in a very direct, but I don't think overstated way. Lum and Abner would return to the radio in 1941 sponsored by Alka-Seltzer for more serialized adventures. The series would provide humor and joy while still showing a great sense of resolve throughout the entirety of World War II and would continue on in a serial format into the post-war era. In 1948, it began a two-year stint as a network sitcom before returning to a serialized format for its final episodes over radio. Even though their film career wouldn't reach the heights of the great comedians of the day, and to be honest, the radio series didn't lend itself to easy adaptation due to Goff and Locke's verbal dexterity not lending itself to a visual medium, they made seven films, which was more films than many other great radio-to-film franchises like The Great Gildersleeve. The series had one of the more dedicated fandoms of any old-time radio program. The National Lum and Abner Society held annual conventions and put out a bi-monthly newsletter well into the 21st century. And there's also been a Lum and Abner comic strip. And all of that is archived for free on the website of the National Lum and Abner Society. There was also a Lum and Abner Museum and Jotham Down store that operated in Pine Ridge, Arkansas up until the fall of 2023. It's easy to see why the series and the characters were so beloved. The radio program's mix of heart and humor made Lum and Abner a welcome guest in many homes for decades after their original release, particularly at Christmas time. It's time for me to close up the old snack wagon, but don't worry, we'll be back with another serving of old-time radio goodness before you know it. If you want to enjoy some of our longer form podcasts, you can feast away at my website at greatdetectives.net. Your emails are also welcome at adam at snackwagon.net. The Old Time Radio Snack Wagon comes to you from Boise, Idaho. Your host is Adam Graham. Sound production is by Rhines Media, LLC. You can listen to past episodes of the Old Time Radio Snack Wagon as well as connect on social media at our website at snackwagon.net. Email suggestions for episodes to adam at snackwagon.net. This has been the Old Time Radio Snack Wagon. Until next time, goodbye. Oh.